All right, I'm going to do this uh, simple flashlight for you, and there's a couple of reasons why I chose to do this. Uh, the first reason is because I wanted to uh, continue the Substance Painter patterns. I think I've done two videos on patterns, and this is another pattern uh, done in Substance Painter that I'm going to put on here. In the past, I would have done all this in geometry, and it would have been hundreds and hundreds of vertices, uh, whereas this is very, very low poly. Uh, because it's a texture and it still looks good. The flashlight overall is not overly low poly. It's probably going to come in at five or six thousand. I'm going to be using 32 vertices and trying to avoid um, putting on a subdivision surface. The second reason that I'm going to do this is just because it's relatively simple and I still want to have some stuff that's relatively easy to do if you're just getting into Blender and you want to make a cool flashlight. And of course the Substance Painter stuff is optional if you don't have it. All right, so over here in Blender, I've got this reference image. I'll provide you the link so you can download it. I brought it in and I pressed S3 to scale it three times and I moved it back a little bit on the Y axis and then just positioned it so that my 3D cursor is here. It still may not be lined up, but we're gonna start there. And my screencast keys are on, so you can see them down there. Okay, so we're gonna model from this side view. It's always easier when you can model against something. All right, so I'm going to press Shift-A, Mesh Cylinder. I'm going to leave it at the default 32, but I'm going to turn off the caps so there's nothing there's nothing on the ends there. Go into Edit Mode by pressing Tab, and I'm going to rotate Y90. And press S to scale, and that's pretty good. I'm just looking at these vertices. They're pretty much lined up. Z, and I'm going to go into Wireframe, and I'm going to press B and box select that. Did I press B? Yeah, I press B. Box select that. I'm going to pull that into the front. And we'll just do it quick. It doesn't have to line up perfectly. All right, I'm going to pull this out to this point here. And then I'm going to press E to extrude, and I'm going to pull to this point. And we'll come back to these in just a minute and make that little indented area here. E to extrude, I'm going to pull out to here. S to scale. And scale down. Make sure you're doing S, right? So it scales it in all dimensions. We'll come to there and then uh, we'll work on this curve in a minute. Okay, now I'm going to do this in depth by pressing E and S and pull in. And you can see my orange vertices there a little bit. So we kind of get a sense of how far it's pulled in. E to extrude and pull out to here. I'm going to do this all as one piece. E and S and pull out to about there, E down to here, E and S and come in a little ways, E come out to there, right, very simple, E and S to about there, E will come to here, we have another indent so I'm going to press E to extrude and come out, so this way I've got the edge loops already there, to about there, E, and right to the end. Okay, Z, solid. So um, what you can see here in the back is it, it goes in and there's a button. So let's do something for that. Let's just press E and S and pull in as much as we really want, something like that. And then I'm gonna press E to extrude, and I'm just gonna pull back. And I'll make the ring part as part of this, but the button will do separate. So just come in a certain ways. We can always adjust this, maybe not quite that far, something like that. Let's just press E and S, and then just come in to the, the, the size that you want your button to be. I think I'm gonna go to about there. And I'll extrude one more time in, so the button has somewhere to sit inside there. Okay, so we got that. Let's turn around and look at the front next. Shift Alt and click those vertices, and the front, now there is stuff in behind, depends if you want to make it transparent or, or whatever. Uh, I'm probably just going to put an emission like you saw. So I don't really care about the inside stuff. So I'm just going to go E and S, give it a bit of thickness, not too much. And then E and come in. And that's really all I need to do for that. All right, so I think it's time to do some beveling and some insetting. Uh, let's go back to the front view in wireframe and control R to put an edge loop there. And let's press S to scale just to bring it out so it's starting to get rounded. I'm gonna press two for edge selection. 
and then control B to bevel and pull and roll up one more. And that's gonna give a gentle curve to it. All right, uh, back into solid view, nah, edit mode. So now I'm going to press three for face selection, shift, alt, and click on one of these edges here and it'll go all the way around. And then we'll go back in the wireframe and we're gonna create this indent. So I'm gonna press E and Alt S and I'm gonna pull and pull it in as much as you really want. Something like that. And I believe we have one over here. Shift, Alt, and click. E, Alt, S, pull. And we've got that. Let's go back into solid view and look at it. All right, we're gonna have to do some beveling. We will, and let's do that right now. All right, I'm gonna start at the front. Two for edge selection. Shift, Alt, and click this edge. Shift, Alt, and click that edge. And let's bevel those. Control, B, pull. And I'm gonna roll back. There's two edges. I want three. And this is metal or hard plastic, so I don't want it too smooth, but I don't want it razor sharp either, so something like that is fine. And now we have this indent, so we want to bevel there. Shift, Alt, and click. Shift, Alt, and click. And just turn so that you can see it. Control, B, and pull. But we're going to need some support edges on this thing here. So I'm going to shift alt and click. Uh, sorry. I'm going to control R there and control B to bevel and hold shift and pull. But I only want two edges. So roll back and pull this towards the sides. And that'll help support that when we shade smooth. All right. Back into uh, edit mode. And we're going to bevel this. Control B. But I want three and this one, I could have done them together. Now this one is important because this piece is where I'm gonna be putting the pattern on. So you know what I might do? I would like to grab both of these edges and bevel them. And that one's got more room than this one. So I'm gonna look at this one and control B, pull, I want three. So I've got that, but I'm gonna need some support in here as well. So control R, Control B, roll back to two, push that in. And we're gonna keep beveling. We'll need another support edge actually here. So, and we may need more than one. So let's pull that in and let's keep beveling. This one, and I could do probably, well, let's just do that one. Control B, pull, but I want three. Let's do these two together. There's something in here that I'm gonna put in there in a moment. So three and um, let's just have a look at this in, in with shade smooth on. So the support edges are helping with the shading here. Let's turn on the cavity shader. It'll be a little bit nicer. Okay. So the front is looking okay. Um, I might actually need, uh, is there another, no, I might actually need another edge there. You can see the shading changing a little bit. I think that has helped. This area is okay, this area, this area. I might put on a modifier in a moment. So let's just come down here. Now, I will put edge loops in here, Control B and pull with just the two. But I'm going, before I lose that selection there, I wanna create this little band that goes in there. So I've done that, I'm gonna duplicate that. Shift D to duplicate it, P to break it out, and now it's sitting on top. I'm going to scale shift X and pull it out like that, all right? But I wanna do a little bit more work on it, so I'm gonna slash to focus on it. I don't want it just to be a flat, you know, bunch of polys. I want to bring this in, E and S, bring it in so it makes contact with the surface. And then I can bevel these edges. So control B, pull, and I want three and slash key. Now it sits in there and it's got a little bit of a bevel on the sides. Okay, we need to bevel down here. As you can see, it doesn't look very good. So if it ever looks like that, what you're missing is more edge loops, essentially beveling. Grab those two, control B and pull with three. And I'm going to do this one, all of the sort of 90 degrees or sharp ones, but then also this one in the corner and it'll look like that. So it's starting to look pretty good. If it still looks kind of funny, you can try sliding another edge loop down and that has pretty much cleared it up. Or 
we can try adding weighted normal and normal's auto smooth. So just watch the, the model. And so that's changed things a little bit. But this is looking a little, yeah, I think I missed bringing an edge loop in here, an extra, an extra one. So I'm going to do that. And I think that all looks good. I want to expand that a bit, but we'll see. So this is where we'll have our pattern. Let's finish up the back part of this. And to do that, I'm just going to steal a circle from here. Shift Alt and click that to make the, the button that goes back there. So I'm going to Shift D to duplicate it. I'll pull it out. P to break it out and we'll take that and just extrude it back a little ways to give it some depth. Shift Alt and click there, F to make a face, three for face selection and Control B to bevel and give it quite a nice bevel and roll your mouse up maybe two more times or so. Now that may be flipped or other parts may be flipped. See that one's red, the rest of this is blue. So I'm with that one selected Alt and either flip or and eh, that didn't do a good job. Some of them are flipped and some aren't, so just recalculate outside. Take that, push it in. Uh, let's go back so I can see what I'm doing here. Man, I don't want it to press too much. I'd like to see the edges of the wall if possible, or just get the sense that it's in there, because otherwise you wouldn't need the hole. So I might shrink it down a little bit, just so you get a little touch of that. I think it might look a little bit better. You can just decide how far out you want your button to stick. All right, we'll do something like that. Okay, so uh, let's do the uh, the glass or whatever up here. And to do that, I'm going to steal this edge. Shift D to duplicate, I'll pull it out. P to break it out. Come in here and I'm going to press F to make a face and I'm going to pull it in to the position I would want it, maybe somewhere on there. I might S to scale just to make sure that it goes into the wall, but I don't want it sticking out. So I got that. All right, so far so good. So pretty simple to do. Uh, just make sure I'm not missing anything except for the clip. And we got that. Okay, so it's time to do the clip. My 3D cursor is still where I left it there. And that's gonna be fine because it's pretty much central. So I'm gonna bring in a plane. Go into edit mode, I'll scale it down a bit. And just G to grab or go. And I'm gonna pull it till it sort of, I can see it overlapping my clip. And the end is right here, and I'm not worried about that part. If I look from the top, uh, it's pretty wide. So for this part, just use your intuition. And in fact, it may not be centered on this. Actually, it probably was just the shadow. All right, let's just SY, scale it in till you get the thickness of the clip you think you want, something like that. All right, I'm gonna select that edge. Press one to look from the front. I'm gonna go into wireframe and one for vertex because it'll light up like that and I can see it better. All right, so I'm there. I'm gonna press E and pull down into the body. And I should have both vertices. And let me just think for a second here if this needs to be tapered. If you look here in this top view, it doesn't look very tapered, it just looks a bit tapered. So what I'm gonna do is I've got these two selected. I'm gonna select these two as well, but not the last two. Look down from the top, and I'm just gonna scale this in the Y a little bit, just like that, nothing much. All right, let's grab these two, look from the front again, and we're gonna pull these up to about the middle of the curve here. E to extrude, pull up to about the level of, of this, something like that, doesn't matter that much. And we're going to extrude these down on an angle. So I'm just going to press E and G and pull right down to where it's going to make the, uh, the curve going up. Just like that. And I think I'm going to taper these a little bit. So I'm going to SY. Just do something that feels good to you. It's trial and error kind of. And then E to extrude up to there. And I might scale those in the Y a little bit more. All right, let's, let's have a look at that. Okay, so we're gonna do some rounding. So let's round off, first of all, this end. Select this edge, either in vertex or edge selection, doesn't really matter, I'll do it there. Shift, Control, B, and pull. And, you know, you can start with, say, two vertices. I don't need them to touch. I'm just gonna put them around there. Roll my mouse up, there's three vertices on each side. Four, five is probably good enough, and you make it something like that. 
I like that. That curve is fine. Two for edge selection. Select here, and I'm going to Control B to bevel, and I'm going to have five. I just don't want these vertices hitting the other ones. So I'm just going to pull up to about there, and that's curved now. Select this edge, hold Shift and get that edge. And now for this one, we're going to Control B. But if they hit, they're going to cross over. So I'm going to press C for clamping so that when they hit, they, they don't cross. They just touch. However, they're not merged. So I'm going to press M, merge by distance. And it got rid of some vertices. and got a nice curve there. And then it come down here and Control B and just pull and have the same five. And that's, that's my clip. I just need to give it some thickness. So let's come into it, select it all and then decide if you want to extrude inwards or outwards. I think I'm going to come in, so press E, Alt S. Pulling makes it go out, pushing makes it come in. So just do that and just look at it and make sure nothing's crossing over and do something like, something like that. And if it's a bit thicker than in reality, it's, it's all right, it's just a, it's a 3D model. Now, Shift Alt and click the edges. You'll have to click multiple times to get all of the edges. You want it all lit up. So we get all parts of it. We're gonna bevel this by hand or manually. Actually, before we do that, there's one thing. See the way this is sticking out still? Three for face selection, select that face. I don't wanna just pull it because I can't go, I can't go in the Z or the X or the Y. So I'm gonna switch here over to normal. Now my blue, my Z axis is in line with this. So I can just pull that into the body. And with that face still selected, X faces will get rid of it. Let's go back to global. And now two for edge selection, shift alt to click again, selecting all the edges and we can bevel this finally. Like that. And then just choose a vantage point that you like. I'll just do it from there, control B, pull, but I only need three. So roll back, there's two edges, three. And give it a bevel, something like that. And shade smooth. And that looks pretty good, I think. I think we've done the model, and let's double check everybody is facing the right way. Yeah. Uh, at this point, I can get rid of the reference image and look at the positioning of this thing. I'm just gonna center it up a little bit. And I think I'll just G and just pull it out, and sort of have it rest like that. All right, let's check out the statistics on this. All right, it's coming in at about 5,500. Uh, you could decide if there's something you want to get rid of or whatever. I don't think it needs a subdivision surface, you know, unless you're going to zoom in this close. It's not going to matter at all. And I think it looks fine. We will put a few details on in Substance Painter. So what I'll do is I'll take a break now. It's early in the day. The sun's on my face there. I'll come back, we're gonna UV unwrap this and we're gonna texture it in Substance Painter. So I'll do that in the next part of this video. Take care. It's time to move on now with this flashlight and I'm gonna get into the UV editing and the texturing of this thing. So we have this piece. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna come in and just press U unwrap. I'm gonna scale that down and just move it out there. That should be fine for that piece. And then I'm gonna press H to hide it. Let's do this main one here. I'm gonna press Control seven and look from the very bottom. And I'm going to press two for edge selection and shift alt and click to put an edge all the way through it there. Control E, mark seam. And I'm just going to mark some seams on this. I'm going to go every Every time I have three, I'm gonna go right in the middle. And it doesn't matter too much how you put your seams in. I mean, you can always do this. I'm doing it every three and see how it turns out if you're not sure if it's gonna work. I'm gonna do that and I think I might leave that little groove. So let's move on. Let's do that one. And let's come over here. Now, this one is important. That's where the pattern is going to go. So I'm going to get, yeah, I'll go for every third. So I'll do that. And we'll come in here and we'll do that. Mark seam. And then over here, I think I'll, I'll, just, I'll just keep it going. 
and see how we do. Let's see, now I got this piece here, this band in the way. I want to forget that. And I'll come in here, mark seam there. And now we're at the end, so that one, mark seam, and then this one. And you don't have to do too many. Uh, let's move that out of the way and come in here. Well, we could even just do that. Let's try it. Let's take that and you unwrap and we'll come over here. So this is the big piece. So what you can see is this piece right here, that's where we're going to put the pattern. And we have some curved ones and we have some straight ones. And it's best if they're straight. I don't think in this case it's going to matter that much, but it depends what you want to do. You know, if you want to put text across or if you need to work on the UVs, you know, it's going to be a real pain if it's like this. So um, you can manually straighten these, and I've done that lots of times in my in my videos. I'm just going to do one just to show you, and then I'm going to use uh, UV squares. Select a square that you think is relatively nice and select that and go SY0, straighten it in the Y, and then this one, SY0. And then take this one and go SX0, and then take this one and go SX0. And then go into face selection, select that. So that's the active face, we've straightened it. And then go Control L, and then right click, follow active quads, and it does that. Okay, so you can straighten all of these if you want to. Uh, I'm going to select a bit of it and control L, press N, and I'm going to use UV squares. That's a free add-on for Blender. Just search UV squares, and I'm going to press to grid by shape. And that's going to do it for me. And I can probably select a couple of them at a time and straighten them. So I'm just going to straighten all these. It'll make it easier to pack this. Uh, it can pack tighter if they're if they're squares or rectangles or whatever, and uh, that's what I'm going to do. So, okay, so that one's got a bit of a problem. Um, so, um, so now I'm going to switch over to UV sync, and I'm going to try to find where that is. And what I'm going to do. Turn that off again. Select. I'm going to try checking this out one more time. There we go. We got it. All right. So it's sometimes a little weird, and it might maybe it doesn't work always the first time. That's pretty good. All right. That's good enough. Okay. So that's that piece done. So let's bring stuff back. We've done that. Hide that. And we've done that. Uh, this piece, I'm just going to you unwrap. Let's move it over here. And I'll hide that. This piece, I'm going to come in. I'll do the every middle of the threes. And unwrap. And let's see if I can... Straighten all those. Yeah, I, I straightened all those. We'll hide that. And for this piece, I'm going to come in and select the middle again. Control E, mark seam. And this one will get a bit of a strange shape like that. I'm going to scale those down a little bit. Let's move them there. Okay, so let's uh, bring everything back. And this is what we have. I'm going to select everything. And I will try um, Average Island Scale and then pack them. And I'm going to use UV Pack Master. And I'll get this. And you can see that not everything is perfectly straight. I might be able to come back in here, use UV Squares and straighten them a little bit. And it might pack a little tighter. Obviously, this takes up a lot of room. I'm just going to pack it. Uh, again 
and it shouldn't matter that that much uh, you can see that and here's the button and here's the the front lens and they're you know a different you know texture resolution it's going to be fine for what we're doing so I'm going to save that and now I'm going to export this as an FBX and bring it into Substance Painter. Here we are in Substance Painter now. And the first thing I need to do is to bake the mesh maps. So I'll do that at 2K. I'll uncheck ID and I'll bake. That's done. So have a quick look at the model. And it's looking okay. All right, I have one texture set, one material. I'm gonna delete that layer and we're gonna get started. So I'm over here on materials and I think to do this, I'm going to use plastic. I'm gonna start with that, throw that on. And we'll come in here and let's make this a dark color. I'm not gonna to go too dark black so that we can see it. Uh, I've got roughness and metal on there, that's fine. I'll leave the roughness there. I'm gonna bring the metallic up and so sort of a metallic plastic sort of or a dull metal a little bit uh, let's come in and add a filter and the filter I'm going to use is this matte finish bring the scale up a little bit the scale of the grunge and decrease the brush intensity and maybe I will lower the roughness a little bit so it's a little bit shiny so this is what we're getting for our flashlight and that's going to be the main material on here anyhow. Now, I did unwrap that, so let's let's go ahead and do that. So this is, let's see, I'll just call this block. All right, so to do this piece, I'm going to, I think I will do it this way. I'm going to duplicate this layer and come in here and change this to a red kind of color, something like that. And I want that only to appear here. So I'm going to add a black mask and come to my polygon fill and choose mesh and click there. And now it's only on that piece there. And if I want to, I can uh, scale that back. It's a smaller piece. Okay, so that's good so far. We want that. Let's see what we can do about the front there on this piece here. So this is red. Uh, I want just an emission on there, I think. And so in my texture set settings, I will add an emissive channel. And I'm gonna go plus, or add a, add a fill layer and a black mask. And I want that only on here. All right, so I'll come back to the layer. And I'm going to, I got emission on. Really all I need is color and emission, I think. And I'll just bring that up. And then you can play with, uh, with this if you want a slightly different color. If you want a, high, a stronger emission, just increase that. And what I may do, this is the emissive. All right, so now let's turn our attention to the pattern that we need here. All right, so the way I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna create a folder, and this is gonna be called pattern. And I'm gonna add a, add a, let's add a fill first of all, and pull that in there. And I'm gonna add a black mask on the folder. Come over here. And I want to select this area, but I'm going to switch this to UV chunk. And that's why I put my seams there. I said that was going to be important. That's going to allow me to select that area. So I'm going to have that there. And on this fill layer, I'm going to want just height. I'm going to bring this up a little bit, not too much. I'm going to add a black mask to this fill layer, which is inside the folder. And then I'm going to add a fill. And in the fill for the grayscale, I'm going to search for the tile generator right there. Right off the bat, you'll start seeing something happening. I'm just going to adjust the position just a little bit. I want it relatively soft. And let's switch this to about, let's try 10 at first. Uh, maybe not that much. Maybe 8 just for this. 
let's come back to the main layer and I have just height let's actually put roughness on as well and do something like that and now we come back to the tile generator and I'm going to change the rotation from 0 to 45 so it looks like that just to show you let's let's switch that to 7 so it's a little bit bigger a little bit more easy to view um, above the tile generator I'm going to add another filter I'm going to try a blur filter so watch the model just softens it up it's the default is 0.5 I'm going to try 0.3 and that's essentially the effect that I'm going for. One other thing you can do, and I encourage you to experiment with the filters, is you know, is add different filters. And so I'm just going to come back to the tile generator and just put in between another filter. Let's just try a bevel, just to see see the difference. So my minus 0.1. I'm going to go up a little bit and. And we can get this and I like that quite a bit so there is my pattern on there uh, which is quite convincing I think as a you know it, it looks a little bit like geometry quite a bit like geometry and uh, you know it's actually very very low poly let's try uh, a couple of different lighting effects So I'll just stick to that uh, for now, for this flashlight. Okay, just a couple more things that I want to do on here. So we've got our pattern, our missive, our red and our black. Let's come up to here and create a paint layer now. In the paint layer, I'm going to choose just color and height. I'll leave the color as maybe not pure white, maybe drop it down a bit in the height. Just drop it down just a little bit. It might even be too much, we'll see. And I'm gonna to snap to, or put it into orthographic and snap to the top. And I'm gonna use a hard brush. Come around here, I just wanna put a dot on the top, very simple. Just something like this, right near here, and just click. And I now have a, dot, a relatively whitish dot, depending on the lighting. So we're gonna put that on there and let's throw in a little bit of text as well. I'm gonna to snap to the side and uh, this is gonna be alpha. I just call this layer alpha layer. And in my alphas, I'm gonna search for font and maybe I'll just use this font here. Click on it and scroll up and we'll change this to something like uh, mega bright. How about that? Maybe I'll make mega and then bright. I don't know. I'll do that. Change the size and let's change the rotation like this so that I can click this right on the side. Just like that. Maybe a little bit bigger than that just so that you can see it as well as possible. So we have that. Let's go back to perspective. And I'm at 1024, I can certainly go up to 2K. You won't see that much difference, but the text will be a little sharper. The pattern will be a little sharper. And that's what we have. Um, I don't know that there's a need for anything else except you could change the color of that button. And if you decided, you know what, I'm gonna have it in red as well, and you just come back here, come back to the red to the mask, come over here, we'll switch to mesh, it was a separate mesh, and you can turn that on if you want. And have that, that button. All right. So that is it, there's uh, no real magic trick or anything. I just wanted to show you the pattern. You could try different patterns on there. And that is our flashlight. I would then have it as one texture. Okay, right over here, I would just change the name, you know, flashlight, whatever. And you would export it 
and then you would plug it in in Blender and do a render if that's what you wanted. Or of course, if you were in here, you could just take a screenshot of that and you'd be good to go. All right, so that's gonna be it for the flashlight tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. And I plan on doing a few more videos on these substance painter patterns so we can build up a little library of them in the substance painter playlist. So if you're looking for a pattern that you need for a gun or a flashlight or something else, uh, maybe some of this will help either in terms of the pattern itself or uh, you know a couple of ways to uh, apply them or add filters to them. All right, take care and we'll see you again soon.